'Twas much that man was made like God before, but that God should be made like man was much more. That was said by the poet John Donne. An old preacher was praying with great oratorical effects in the midst of a violent hurricane. As the earth quivered and the heavens roared, he cried out, "Send us the spirit of the children of Israel, the children of Moses, the children of the promised land." Another brother prayed with more earnestness, "Lord, don't send anybody. Come yourself. This is not a time for children." This is the cry of humanity in every generation, and it is why Christmas is such great news. For unto us a child is born. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The first five verses of the Gospel of Saint John inform Saint Augustine that one Platonist said that they were fit to be written in letters of gold and set up to be read in the highest places of all the churches. The learned Francis Junius, in the accounts he gives of his own life. Tells how he was in his youth infected with loose notions of religion, and by the grace of God, was wonderfully recovered by reading accidentally these verses in a Bible, which his father had designedly laid in his way. He says that he observed such a divinity in the argument. Such an authority and majesty in the style that his flesh trembled, and he was struck with amazement that for a whole day he scarcely knew where he was or what he did. And then he dates the beginning of his being religious and receiving his gift of faith. These glorious five verses of Saint John speak about the incredible incarnation of God, God becoming a man in the child Jesus in Bethlehem. Today we celebrate the feast of Christmas. It is a feast of great wonder. The birth of Jesus. Is a mystery to be adored, and not a puzzle to be pried into. The shepherds and the magi, who wanted to adore Christ, found him. But Herod and the scribes at his court, who pried into his birth, never reached him. Come, my friends, let us brace ourselves. To adore this newborn King in the manger, Jesus in the manger is a miracle of God's grandeur. The babe you see in the manger is no ordinary mortal. He is no ordinary child, but the Word become flesh. He is the divine. Who enfleshed himself? Jesus in the manger is the divine breaking forth through human flesh. Jesus, who appeared in human flesh, is the same God who created the heavens and the earth, the entire universe. The Word who became man is the same Word who, in the beginning, Was with God, and was God. It is through this word that all things were created, 
and there was nothing made which was made without it. The Word had a being before the world had a beginning. Although Jesus in the manger appeared in human form, he was also divine. He was the same God whom Abraham and the patriarchs adored and even the angels of heaven worshipped. When we adore him, we adore him whom the patriarchs and the angels adored as the creator of the world. Jesus in the manger, who is the author of our joy, is also the author of our being. Come, my friends, let us adore him. Jesus in the manger is a display of God's innocence. In the Gospel of St. John, John proclaimed, The Word became flesh. Flesh is weak and is subject to sin, but Jesus in human form was sinless. When we talk about flesh in the first place, it implies inherent weakness. It is a symbol of weakness. But the paradox of Christmas is that the omnipotent God hid himself in the weakness of human flesh in Bethlehem. St. Paul said, Jesus was crucified in weakness, but he lives by the power of God. Secondly, Flesh also implies death and mortality. As long as we are clothed in flesh, we are doomed to die one day. All men, great and small, progressively travel towards the grave, and one day will be made equal in the mud. And finally, flesh implies that it is tainted with sin, when Adam, the first man, sinned, God said, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. He returned to the dust, not only because he was dust, but also because he, by his sin, sank into dust. Adam, who is in his flesh, carried sin, was condemned to be earthy, he carried about him his weakness, sin, and mortality. Flesh had fallen into disrepute because of sin. But Jesus Christ had taken this fallen flesh in order to raise it up into a new body. He took this flesh and destroyed sin and has imparted eternal life to us. St. Paul said, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. This is the mystery of Christmas, that the unseen God is seen in human form and that the sinless God is clothed with sinful flesh. He who has faith to believe in this great mystery shall be rewarded with eternal life. Jesus in the manger is a display of God's love. He who was the Word made man, and he dwelt among us. When God took flesh, he could have dwelt with the angels, but he preferred to stay among us. What a glorious condescension! What is man that God is mindful of us? He who dwelt among the angels, those glorious and excellent creatures 
now came to dwell among us. A generation of vipers and sinners. The dwelling of Jesus among us was worse than the dwelling of the prophet Ezekiel among the scorpions. Jesus, who was divine, was born in mean circumstances. He was not born in a mansion, but in a manger. His parents were not illustrious personalities, but were common folks. His companions were not children clothed in dazzling garments, but poor animals taking shelter from the chill wintry night. He was clothed at birth, not with warm woolen clothes, but with strips of cloths. He completely emptied himself at his birth. In the manger at Bethlehem, our Lord Jesus concealed all his majesty and glory. He emptied himself because he loved us and he wanted to become one with us in all things except sin. When we look at Jesus in the manger, his frailty and his form, we must discern his love for us. There was no weakness or wretchedness which he spared himself in proving his love for us. Therefore come, my friends, our Lord is great, great in his incarnation and greatly to be loved and adored by us.